FX Street uh, session today. Uh, today is March 3, 2020, and today we're going to be talking uh, about options with Chuck Philip. Uh, my name is Jose Blasco, actually. I am not Chuck. Uh, I, will, uh, I will pass the microphone and handle the room to, to Chuck in just a second so he can uh, go over the markets and everything he has planned for today's session with you. But before we start, uh, again, I would like to introduce the session, uh, explain a little bit of what is it that we're going to do, how we are getting organized, uh, so you can follow every one of our processes more efficiently, more, uh, and, uh, you know, in a, in a way that uh, makes your life uh, simpler. Anyway, uh, so today we're going to get into uh, options trading with, uh, with Chuck. As I said, it's going to be a swing uh, trading session. So he's going to be looking for uh, trading opportunities of a certain, certain duration, as you, as you will see. Uh, Chuck has certain specialties in the world of options. Options, uh, as you probably know, options give you options. So there are many ways to expose yourself as a trader in the marketplace and uh, you're going you're gonna to get to, to experience uh, specific ways uh, where you know you you will be led into the rationale behind it etc cetera, etc cetera, okay in the other hand uh, for uh, to some of you maybe it's gonna be the first time ever that you are having a session with chuck and therefore in this sense uh, i would like to ask everyone participating in the session to uh, to bear with our presentation in the sense that uh, we will spend a little bit of time uh, going over what is it that we do the rationale behind it and then we'll practice uh, but obviously, uh, one session only would not be enough uh, to present uh, and have you properly exposed to, to a trading methodology. So basically, what's going to happen is that Chuck will be running multiple sessions. You will have the opportunity to join him uh, multiple times. And little by little, the more you spend time with Chuck, so the more you will get to understand all the details of what he does. And, and uh, this is how we're going to be working uh, on in those sessions. Okay, so we're going to break the session in, let's call it two parts. One part where you will be uh, exposed to uh, how it's done and then the doing it itself. Okay. Anyway, uh, before we start, uh, last comment from me uh, before I turn the room into Chuck. A disclaimer this is a financial presentation and we always have disclaimers, isn't it? So, Forex Street SLU provides generic information to its subscribers and it is strongly advised that the client should consult with a financial advisor before proceeding to trade. While all information posted is believed to come from reliable sources. The company does not guarantee the accuracy, correctness, or completeness of information available for its service and therefore will not be liable for any loss incurred. FX Street does not provide any investment advice, nor provide any personalized investment recommendations and or advice in making a decision to trade. No guarantee is made that any user of the service will or is likely to achieve results advised by the webinar examples. There is often a large difference between theoretical performance and the actual letter uh, results reached by any trading platform. There are many influencing factors related to either the market in general or the specific implementation of any information which can act affect actual trading buy or sell results. So before you start trading, please make sure that you have considered your entire financial situation, including financial commitments, and you understand that trading is highly speculative and that you could sustain significant losses. Okay, so beyond the legality of what I just read, which is obviously important, uh, let's all work professionally in the session with Chuck. Uh, we are counting on you to have your risk management rules, for, follow them diligently with discipline like a professional trader would do. Uh, and if you need support uh, to learn better on how to do that, uh, please make sure you communicate with us uh, on the emails that you can see on the screen. Uh, so we know what you need better, because uh, if you look closely at the calendar, you will probably notice that we are going to spend the weekdays uh, to focus on trading sessions, where Saturday, to be specific, uh, most of the times are going to be lesson days, lecture days, where we can certainly go over uh, the specifics that you may need to incorporate in your trading methodologies, such as risk management, for example. Okay, so... Uh, having said all of this, uh, this is what I had for you, just a quick introduction, okay? And uh, uh, I will pass now the room to Chuck, uh, and I will see you soon. You guys take care and enjoy the session. You are in very, very good hands. Chuck, the room is yours. Okay, thank you. So, good morning, everybody. Let me share my screen. Here we go. So my name is Chuck Phillips. A uh, little history of me. Uh, I am a uh, multi-career person. Uh, very quickly, I started in architectural drafting and design, went into computer programming and applications engineers, then into martial arts. Uh, I'm a karate sensei of 30 years and started trading uh, somewhere around 1997 or 98. Uh, during that early years, it was mostly stocks and then uh, into 
covered calls. I liked covered calls because I could just let them sit there and do their thing while I was trying to build my karate school. And uh, quickly changed it into uh, credit spreads. I've been I'm, I've been doing credit spreads for a long time. And the past uh, I don't know four, three, ten years. I, I'm terrible with dates. Can't figure out my own birthday. Uh, but uh, I've been doing uh, futures and forex as well. But uh, like I said, I specialize in credit spreads, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, I thought I'd do a quick and very light overview of options. Uh, there's many parts that I will skip over in options. Uh, there's just it can be can be fairly simple, but it can also be very complex. So uh, the main thing that we're going to cover today is is a credit spread, and then we'll go into some uh, checking the charts and seeing if we can find anything. And of course, Q&A is anytime you want, uh, but specifically at the end as well. So, hello and welcome, konnichiwa. So what's, uh, and the slides, by the way, are thank you to Jeff from yesterday uh, and Wayne and the crew. Uh, they put these together and I just uh, copied them and filled in my stuff. So I, I just like the background and it looks a little more professional than what I usually do. Kind of weird that a computer guy doesn't doesn't have good presentations, but. Content is good. It's just the pictures don't look all as, all as nice as pretty as these. So <laughs> there you go. So you have to decide. You know what you're looking for. Are you looking for daily income, weekly, monthly, uh, all of this stuff? You can do any and all of this, um, depending on your particular uh, taste and also your ability to get uh, in front of the market. Uh, if all you can do is get in front of the market once a day, you can't be a day trader just ain't going to happen, right? So, you know, uh, like I said, when I was putting this dojo together, uh, it took a lot of time and effort, and so I did the covered calls. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So an options contract, like I said, just a quick review. It, it's designed to control a stock or an ETF. Um, so it does have leverage. Uh, they have expiration dates, uh, quantity, number of uh, contracts. Uh, and uh, that you can take delivery or have delivery put to you in some occasions. Uh, they can also settle for cash. That's rare. It, things like the SPX uh, index settles for cash, but mostly it's uh, taking delivery of a stock if you let it uh, get put to you or if you uh, uh, decide to execute your uh, call. So, does trade in shares. Uh, so 100 shares makes up one contract. So if the share costs ten dollars, uh, you have to buy a hundred shares contract, right? Then your um, controlling a thousand dollars worth of that particular thing, right? So uh, I think Ford is uh, like five dollars right now or something like that. So if you bought a hundred shares of Ford, it would be $500. But if you uh, bought a call option, for example, it might cost you, instead of $5, it might cost you 50 cents okay, to control that 100. So it has good leverage, is, is what I'm getting the point is. Okay? Um, the movement in, in the equity does not correlate one to one with the options contract. You have to look at the delta for that. If you don't know uh, what the Greeks are, um, obviously you should learn those. But uh, if the delta is 0.5, that means that for every dollar the stock moves, the option moves 50 cents. So if the delta is 0.75, then it moves 75 cents for every dollar. Okay. And the options market operates the same hours as the equity market, so you can't trade after hours. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions, again, like the, uh, the, uh, the Russell, I think, and the SPX. Uh, uh, the SPX is the actual index for the SPY, um, and there are some of those that close a few uh, 15 minutes after. Um, there's one actually on, on a Thursday that settles um, Friday morning. So uh, they're a little tricky, some of those. But in, in general, they all operate the same as the uh, equity. So the benefits, again, it's leverage, okay, uh, to, let's see, Tesla's going for about $800 right now. To buy 100 shares of Tesla costs you $80,000. Okay. 
um, depending on the strike and the expiration, uh, it's going to cost you uh, maybe $5,000 to get into that and control 100 shares. So it has uh, leverage. Um, commissions are, are, are obviously low right now uh, with the bidding wars that are going on. Um, the account size, you can get in, again, much less. To control 100 shares of Tesla, you can do that with $5,000 versus $80,000 to get to the equity. Uh, so, and, and I know 800 uh, and Tesla is a big number, but it's just to show you the same thing with a $20 stock. The proportion is the same. Um, you can get it out basically just about any time you want. It's, it's, uh, um, and, and it is true diversification because you can do options on just about any type of instrument now, including ETFs that are from all over the world or all over different types of uh, metals or uh, currencies or whatever. They have ETFs for those. Okay. Uh, very simply, you can buy, a, uh, there's calls and puts. Okay. So a call says um, that someone has the right to buy the stock from you and a put from another person. And a put is uh, that someone has the uh, obligation to buy the stock from someone else. So if I sell a call, okay. sorry, someone's typing here. And I'm just reading it. Oh, OK. All right, I'm just giving you some instructions on how to read the, uh, how to do the uh, slides, but I'm gonna, sorry, Jeff, I'm gonna ignore it for now, because this is my first time in here, and I just wanna make sure you get it going here. Let's see, okay. All right, so anyway, um, if I if I sell a call to Jose, that means that I, give him the right to buy the shares from me at a given price. If I sell a put to Jose, that means that uh, he has the right to make me buy them at a certain price. And like I said, this is very light and very uh, um, uh, small part of options uh, explanation. Uh, most of you, I'm assuming, already know that. Uh, no, it's fine, Jeff. <laughs> I missed the scroll here. Um, but there are lots of different ways. There's be, you can buy a call or sell a call. You can buy a put or sell a put. And in those four different things, you can do all kinds of crazy things. And they have crazy names for them, right? Iron butterfly, or iron condor, butterfly, broken lizard. That's a Tasty Works brand thing. Um, calendars, ratios, back calendar, back ratios, all kinds of different things. You can buy two calls and sell one put. Uh, you can buy two calls that, uh, that expire uh, Friday and buy two more that expire in a month or two, or, or two months from now. Or, you know, there's all kinds of combinations. So I'm going to focus just on credit spreads. Okay. And like I said, things that we're not covering are the Greeks, the uh, Delta, uh, Vega, Theta, all those things. Uh, it's something that you should be aware of uh, when you're trading. Uh, I'm just not covering them today. And extrinsic versus intrinsic value, um, in the money versus out of the money. If the price of the stock is at $82 and you sell a call for $80, it's $2 in the money because okay? it's $2 higher than the price that you sold it at. American versus European, the very basic thing is that American, you can uh, have it, uh, the option contract uh, executed any time during the life of the contract. So if you have an uh, option contract that expires uh, May 3rd, uh, that's probably not right, the third, May, third Saturday in May, then any time between now and the third Saturday in May, the person that's on the other end of that, or you for that matter, can, can close it out. Okay? Uh, European, it can only be uh, executed at the end of the contract. Okay. There are very few of those in the market, but you just should be aware of them. One of them uh, is, of course, uh, the um, Russell uh, ETF. Uh, implied volatility is something you should know about. Basically, 
Uh, need, uh, for implied volatility, basically, if uh, implied volatility is low, you want to be a buyer of options, and if it's high, you want to be a seller of options. But there are things you can do even with that. Open interest is something you should be aware of. Uh, if you're, uh, especially with the credit spreads, if you end up uh, with uh, strike prices uh, where there's not a lot of open interest, it's going to be hard to get in and get out. Uh, same thing, put call ratio is something you may want to know about. I'm not going to be covering the 2D or the 3D graphing at all. Uh, it's it's much more complicated all of this stuff is than than what we have time for so okay um, I'm hoping you can see these okay these are just two examples of charts uh, your mileage will vary meaning what I do and what you do may be different things and so what you get out of the market and what I get out of the market may be different things if this is your zone down here at the two blue lines and price comes down and almost hits your zone and your trading rules say, I can't take that trade because it didn't hit my zone. And my trading rules say, I can come within whatever number of ticks and it's okay to take it. Then I've taken a trade and, and from this little chart here, it looks like I have a winning trade and you have no trade. Same thing here. Some people love these long wicks. Other people hate them. Okay. Well, if you love these long wicks and you take the trade, it's possible that you would have had a good trade. And if I said, no, nah, I don't like those, I'm not going to trade that. Okay? So just keep in mind that, that what I do isn't necessarily right for you. Okay? It's just the way I trade. That's all. All right, so why do I like credit spreads? Okay? Let's talk about what a credit spread is, basically. I'm going to switch over to trade station here. And we're looking at the SPY right now. Uh, current price is at 309. I think it's going to continue to go up uh, as an example. I'm not saying it will or won't. This is just an example. So I'm thinking it's going to go up to 320. Okay? It's going to skip through this zone and go to the next zone. Okay? So I'm going to sell somebody the right to make me buy the stock at 305. Uh, where's my drawing? Oh, I've got to get on this window. Why isn't it let me do this? Jose, I can't click. I can't do anything here. Yes, Chuck, I'm here. Yeah, I can't. I can't access trade station for some reason. I can see it, but I can't. Did it just okay. Okay? Would you like to try to stop sharing your screen? Get yeah, trusted and share your screen, maybe that helps. Let's, let's try that. Give me just a moment here. One second, everybody. Really? There we go, okay. What happened to my window? Here we go. Just trying to get wait, trade station to work. It seems to be having problems. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, sometimes could happen. It happened to me at times that uh, for some mysterious reason, especially when using multiple monitors, it's like the instance of trade station is in some monitor that is not available, and. Uh, you know, uh, it's difficult to get transition back on the screen because it's like it's in some other screen that you don't have access to. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is what's happening to you. I don't know. I'm going to close options. All right. Let's, let's do this. I'll just have to restart it, I guess. I'll just not. All right. I was going to show you graphically, but I can show you on the screen here. I mean, without, I'll just talk about it. Okay. So as I was saying, the SOC, the ETF uh, SPY is, I'm going to share the screen, I guess. I should do that, huh? Okay. 
Is the screen back? Yeah, I am about to see you. I see you now. I see your PowerPoint. Okay. Turn that on. Turn that. Okay. So you. Uh, okay. So if I sell somebody the right to put the stock to me at uh, 305, it's already at 309. Well, they're not going to make me buy it at 305 if I can if they can sell it on the open market for 309, right? So I'm going to make money on that. I'm going to buy. I'm going to sell the 305 and I'm going to buy the 300 as cover under it. So if if it goes from 309 down to 290, then they can make me buy it at 305. But I can turn around because I bought the 300. I can make somebody else buy it from me for 300. So I'm out five dollars instead of uh, fifteen dollars because if it's at two ninety, I would have to take it at two ninety and then sell it at three oh five. Well, this way I can take it at two ninety and sell it at three hundred with a credit spread. So I'm out five dollars. But if it, it that's if it goes against me, right? If it goes up. From 309 to 310 to 320, again, they're not going to make me buy it, right? So I can get out of it with a profit. If it just stays at 309 until the expiration of the contract, again, they're not going to make me buy it at 305. They can sell to the open market for 309. If it goes down a little bit, say it goes from 309 down to 306, well, 306 is higher than 305, so I still, they can make a dollar more selling it on the open market than they can to me. This is the only asset that I know of where the price goes in the opposite direction of what you want it to, and you still come out making money. In fact, because if uh, if I sell the 305, uh, I was going to go look at it on the uh, chart, but I didn't. I can't open the chart, so I got to go and make sure that that's all closed off now. Excuse me. Yeah, see, it's still it's still there. I got to delete it. I switched over to 10 because I thought it would be more stable, but I guess not today. Seems to be par for the course for our little uh, project here where you just kind of run into things that are forcing us to improvise, test our resolve. <laughs> uh, okay, get rid of that one. Okay, let's give it another try. So if if I sold it for 305 and I and I bought the 300 underneath it, um, and I made a uh, dollar 25 on it, that means my break even isn't at 305. It's at uh, 303.75. So if I can let it go down from 305 to 304, and it's gone below my strike price, and I still make 25 cents, which is going to cover my commissions and a little more probably. Right. Oh, isn't that nice? It's updating. I didn't. I just read that. All right. Well, let's get rid of that. <laughs> Let it do its thing. Okay. So that's why I say two and a half out of three times you make money. If it goes up, you make money. If it stays flat, you make money. If it goes down a little bit, you still make money. There we are. Don't look at my password. Oh, no, I didn't dump the cash, sorry. <laughs> I know. I, I do that automatically with 9.5. I didn't even think about it with this one. Same number of characters? Melanie. All right, we're opening up here. Okay, go over here to the current, and we'll put in uh, SPY. Okay, so, oops, got to type slower on this one. All right, so see, it went up. I told you it was going to go up. It went from 309 to 310. <laughs> this, come on. 
Moving right along. Got to load everything back up. All right. So anyway, uh, why I like them? I get paid up front. Okay. So on a on a, a larger account, this is nice because that money is immediately available for you to use. So you can use it to open up a different credit spread or to uh, do whatever you want with it, right? Okay. They do hold slightly margin, but uh, you still get paid and you get to use it. Okay. With the bid and ask spread being wide, I can get the midpoint more often with a credit spread because I have two legs instead of one. So I avoid those bid ask spread issues sometimes. And of course, the short turnaround. With a credit spread, you're looking to sell uh, as much time as possible, but as little as possible to get away with it to make the premium that you want. And so you're in the trade for a lot less time. And because you're in the trade for a lot less time, you have less exposure. That's why I like the credit spread. Okay. So, uh, what are you what are you going to look for to find a trade? Okay. Um, you have to eliminate the noise. You have to look for the best things that you can look for to get what you want. Okay. And for me, I like stocks that are eighty dollars in price or higher. Okay. I want the open interest to be at least a hundred on the strikes that I am taking. And for credit spreads, I want a high IV. Now, that's not necessarily requirement, uh, but you do get paid better. Um, the example I always give is I would, uh, high IV would be equivalent to retail selling at Saks Fifth Avenue prices. Low IV, really low, would be selling at Walmart prices. Well, the target would be somewhere in Kohl's. They'd be, you know, something like that, Macy's. They'd be in the middle. Well, you can make money at all three of those. But you make more money at higher prices, right? But you can still make prices with a low IV. You just don't make as much, okay? Or it's harder to find, things like that. I like to look at the extremes of the Bollinger Bands uh, because I can run a scan for that. And a lot of times, when a, uh, an equity is at the extremes of the Bollinger Bands, it tends to fall at or near a zone where institutional uh, buying and selling happens. Okay. And then I want weekly options because I want to get in and out of this quickly. And they say that options contracts expire rapidly the last 30 days of the contract. Right. If if you have a contract that is nine months or ten months long, there's a lot of time for the stock to do something. But if it's only a month long, there's less time for the stock to do something. And so uh, your theta value, uh, your time value is going to decrease. Well, it really decreases the last few days of the contract. And so I'm looking for week weeklies that I can get in and out of and uh, take advantage of that. So uh, the criteria that I'm going to use, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a scan if I can get in. Can you let me in? This is really weird. Just doesn't let me do anything. I don't understand why it's it's just frozen. I'm clicking on the mouse here and trying to change to different desktops, and it's just not letting me do anything. Uh, something maybe happening, some frozen process or something. Any chance, maybe, uh, Chuck, that you switch to 9.5? I see you have 9.5 there. Yeah, I can do that. Come on. Great button, Chuck. Yeah, not ideal when these things happen, isn't it? But anyway, uh, I think we, we have all been there uh, when trading one day and the software got hung on us or something like that. So. Where's um, when you have a trade open? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a uh, yeah. Actually, it, it should be. You know, this is like when when trainers go to the gym and and they do training and they use kind of weights and things like that. Maybe, maybe one uh, good exercise we should do as trainers is to you know get a buggy computer or something like that on purpose to practice trading with with technical problems just to challenge our patience level and our our discipline because obviously this when you have a trail running is very frustrating but we we still need to keep cool isn't it so yeah let's uh, understand this is another thing that would happen and and that's it yeah, bo likes my desktop yeah that's a that's a part of my dream of being successful in trading is having a mustang that i want custom built and so forth and or maybe an old 1964 baby blue hatchback. That'd be nice. Yeah, I can go out and get any, just any Mustang right now, but I got I got thoughts, <laughs> and so I have certain I have certain goals that I'm waiting to achieve, and so I'm saying no, I can't do it until I do this. So that's just a visual reminder. Visual clues are always very helpful. I have a few of those around here. It's a nice way to keep motivated. Yes. Okay. So everybody look somewhere somewhere else. <laughs> Hit the right button. Oh, but you won't be able to see the Tesla that I was going to show. Oh, well, that's all right. Good steer, huh? Okay. Well, at least I can work with this one. I can click. Loading. All right. Go over here. Avoid all these things. I had the other one all set up for class. Oh, well. Ignore all that other stuff. Come on. There. Now you don't have to look at it. <laughs> okay. So, we are going to create a new scan. Okay. Give it a name. Next, tell it what you want to look for. I'm going to look in all stocks. And then down here, you should never touch this because if you hit all stocks, it's going to say, look at all stocks, but exclude all stocks. The only reason I would recommend doing it is if you build yourself a um, file that you don't want to look at. So this is a list of stocks that I don't want to look at. <laughs> Pedro, <laughs> I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> All right, so next, uh, price. Start with price. We're going to do last, equal to or greater than $80. We are going to do, uh, let's see here. What did I say? Go back one slide. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. We want uh, open interest, options related data, open interest calls and puts. Okay. I'm just going to put a thousand in there. That's way low. I, I don't care. All I want to do is know that it is optionable. By putting this in there, open interest of just that low number, if there's no open interest, even that low, chances are there's no options. If there's no options, I can't do a credit spread. So I don't need to look at that stock, right? Next, 
Um, IV. We could do IV. Let's see, where is that under? I forget. Anybody remember off the top of my head? I always use it from the bottom, the indicator portion, and I go for IV, implied volatility. Yeah, problems sometimes um, yeah. scanning with that one. But to be honest, I think that that's happening more with a 10.0 and 9.5. So okay. that one may work. Yeah. Um, I don't see the one that I want. Implied volatility. There it is. All right. Implied volatility over 12 months. There it is. I want it to be equal to or greater than 60, which means it's an IV, uh, high IV. Okay. Next is, close those off. We want an indicator. We want Bollinger Bands. I'm just going to use the stock one here. And I want the upper band or lower band today. Which one do I want? Somebody tell me which one we want to look at. I'm going to go lower. Lower band. Eh? No, that's not right. I got to go price. Uh, last price is equal to or less than the Bollinger Band indicator. So I got to go down to indicators. Bollinger Band. I have these all created, but I thought walking. Okay, we want it to be lower than, equal to, or less than the lower Bollinger Band. So $80 has options, high IV, and it's at the lower Bollinger Band. Okay, so we will run this. And now it's got to go and calculate for the first time. Let's go back over here, see if I missed anything. Uh yeah, weeklies, okay. Um okay, so that's when I'm actually putting the trade on. All right. So we found forty eight stocks that meet that criteria supposedly. Let me take the regular session off. Um that's linked, okay. So ADS. Okay. Here's the Bollinger bands, the red and the green. Yeah, you can see it's there. Okay. Um, so it's it's a possibility. Okay. We could look at that one. Okay. Oh, I didn't turn the. I got to turn on. Here we go. Hang on, one more thing. Helps to put those on. There we go. Let's go back to ADS. Okay. Um, you can see it's not anywhere near a uh, green UFO. Or it, it maybe just hit it and decided not, but I, I, I don't like it there. Skip and go to the next one. Okay, so this is coming in approaching. Okay. So it's possible that we could do this one. Uh, depends on what we have for. Is it going to let me open these? No. All right, we're just not going to look at them. Isn't life fun? I guess we're not going to look at the actual options on there. We have to do it another way. You know, we're talking about backups. Okay, I got backups. I'll fix their wagon. Rid of that. Rid of that. How are we doing on time? We only got 15 minutes. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna zip through this. All right. So because we're low on time, uh, <laughs> we're going to skip a little bit of this. Okay. 
what I'm looking for is a $5 spread, maybe a $10 spread, depends on your account size and so forth. Um, I want the short leg to be below the zone. So I'm going to sell below uh, where the UFO shows up there. Okay. I want the credit to be at least 50 cents between the bid, or between the short leg and the long leg. Uh, I personally look for, uh, I'm up to about 80 cents now. Okay. If it doesn't have 80 cents, I won't trade it. The expiration, again, I'm looking for weeklies. So today is Tuesday. I'm looking for this Friday for expiration. Okay. If I can get 80 cents and it expires this Friday, I'm going to take that trade. Okay. I might go out to the next week, but that's as far as I go. It's two weeks out because I want that time value to collapse very much. Okay. And the, fast, the, the closer I am to expiration, the faster that's going to collapse. Except for some odd stocks like uh, Priceline or, or Booking, I guess now. Okay. That that seems to hold its value a lot longer, but it's a you know huge stock. So, um, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna try this one more time. And um, getting out of the trade. Yeah, I know. Um, there's different ways you can get out of this, and it's up to you and how you write your trade plan, and, and you have to stick to your rules. Uh, but if you're if you get in at the at the uh, lower the green UFO, then look for the red UFO above it, and that's where you would get out, whether or not time has expired. Okay, because what's going to happen when it hits that red zone? Supposedly, it's going to go back down, which means it's going against you now, and you're losing money. Okay, so if you get in for it for 80 cents and it goes up to that top zone, and uh, price is at 30 cents now, and it turns around, well now it's going to be 32, 34, 36, okay, and instead of taking your 50 cents profit, you're losing profit now. So get out of the opposing zone. The other is 50% uh, within the first two days. If I take and open up a credit thread right now and it expires next Friday, that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three days plus five days plus the weekend, you know, I'm in the market for uh, 10 days, including the closed weekend. right? So if I get into it for a dollar credit and later today, it drops down to 50 cents. Why would I stay for nine more days to get that last 50 cents? Close it out. Okay, now, there's certain caveats with that that I'm not going to go into right now, but, but that's a basic rule that I have. Is once it hits 50% profit in the first two days, today or tomorrow, I'm getting out of it because I don't want to be at risk in the market. Uh, and then, of course, on the opposite end, uh, if you have a stop, as you should, right? When it hits that stop, you got to get out and take your small loss because you go, well, okay, well, yeah, I hit my stop, but I can see just below that there's another green UFO. So I'm going to let it run. And then it runs through your zone and it hits that next green UFO, and uh, suddenly that one disappears from the screen because that has been. Uh, push through and then what are you going to do now you're losing even more right so you have to stick to your stops okay? and the other exit is if the short leg can be bought back for 10 cents okay it's likely that um, the long leg is at a nickel or at zero so if it's at a nickel then you're buying it back as a combination for five cents and you're done. Okay. <clears throat> there are times where you might want to buy back just the short leg and let the long leg run. So if I, uh, we were using the SPY as an example, I sold the 305 and I bought the 300. Price goes up today to 320. I close out the short leg for 10 cents. Okay. I've made $1.20 instead of $1.30. 
and now I just let that long one run because who knows? There might be a tweet or a natural disaster or the central banks change their minds, you know, whatever on the on the uh, and it drops, and now you can make money on the long leg too. Okay? But that's not typically what I like to do because it ties up your margin, ties up your money. Okay, so uh, post trade. Okay, I always record my trades. I have a spreadsheet that I use. Uh, some people have uh, software that they use that uh, helps you with trading journals that can tie into your account and you can just dump it in there. Um, some people write it down on a piece of paper. Some people take photos of their trades and write on the chart, uh, take snap uh, screenshots, you know, whatever works for you, but you have to document all of your trades. And then once a month, once a quarter, whatever, you know, once every 30 trades, whatever, you got to go back and you got to look at all those trades and find out what you did right and what you did wrong, what works and what doesn't work. Um, early on in, in uh, the, I, uh, when I, uh, I started really heavily documenting my trades, I found out that Wednesday was my worst day of trading because I documented the day of the week. I looked at all the trades on every day, and Monday and Tuesday were good. Thursday was really good. Friday was okay, but Wednesday was the worst. And with Wednesday came, I was not so good. And so I had to figure out why, but I couldn't figure out why if I didn't document my trades. <laughs> no, they were they were actually on Tuesdays, and then. Uh, they got moved because of uh, uh, other people's, yeah. I wasn't going to name names, but that was it. Okay. And now uh, Wayne is there. That's fine. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> okay. So now Wayne is there, and so that's fine. But Wednesdays is a good day for me to teach because uh, I'm not doing a whole lot in the markets. So I don't know if I can, yeah, okay. Let's see if we can get in here. There are some things to be wary of. Um, like I said earlier in the session, the bid ask spread can be crazy. Um, I took a position on Tesla this morning. Let's take a look at it once it opens up here. Oh, we did our scan too, didn't we? Oh, we did it in the other one though. Did we? Did I build it here? Yeah, there it is. Turn this off. I'm not going to go into Option Station Pro again because I, but I'll go into Tesla. Yeah. You can see Tesla gapped up. Uh, oh, I got these turned off. I'm going to leave them off for now. Uh, it gapped up. This was a, a UFO zone. Um, obviously, this is the demand side of it. Okay. You can see here on a two minute candle. Uh, it popped down. I got into this about here for a dollar eighty five on a five dollar spread. Okay. As it's moving down okay, from here, do, 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 do. price is jumping all over the place. Okay. Um, so here was uh, one eighty five. One, oops, 145 is where I got out. Um, I think around here it jumped up. And if you're sitting there watching it live, it just drives you insane, man. If you're not used to it. Well, 320, uh, I think that's right. Okay. Down here, okay. uh, 132. Okay. And that's the last I recorded. But if you watch it live, it it jumps from 185 to 220 to 120 to 164 to 84 184 to 210 to and this is all in like five seconds because the bid ask spread is two dollars on on Tesla on a jump like this it's more than two dollars between the bid and ask spread okay? um, and so. What I'm trying to say is, if you're not used to that sort of a thing, 
and you're not uh, you're not going to be comfortable with trying to trade that and so don't take a stock that is hugely volatile like that uh, i remember the first time i tried this with amazon it jumped two dollars i was in it for like 205 or something and the bid ask spread or the the midpoint okay the mid price that's what all these are on the screen here the mid price went from 205 to 410 to 120 and back up to three dollars or something and it's just it's going crazy and this and it's like i couldn't take it i got out for a 10 cent profit and considered myself lucky <laughs> and it just it just uh uh, is not something that you can do just right off the top of the bat. So stay away from the ones that are really high um, uh, volatility until you get used to doing these things. Okay, I'd like to look and see what this is now, but I don't want to. I could open up my Tasty account and look at it, I suppose, but we're almost out of time. So we were looking at, uh, which one was it? This one? No, this one. F AFG. We found one before the markets crashed. So you could, oh, come on. Okay. Let's turn those back on. So this is just coming into the zone now. So if you wanted to take this trade, you could sell. Okay, I would be comfortable selling the 90. Okay, uh, as a beginner, as an aggressive trader, if they have a 93, you could take that, or a 92. Okay, but if you want to be conservative. You could, t you could sell the 90 and buy the 85 underneath it. I always do $5 spreads when I'm teaching, but you can do a $1 spread, $2 spread, whatever you want, right? whatever you're comfortable with, whatever your account allows. Um, oh, and one other thing I didn't mention is, in case you didn't know, options count the same as equities in terms of number of trades for a day trade. So if you get into this and out of it the same day, it counts as a day trade. And you can only do three day trades in a five day period if your account is under twenty five thousand dollars. They're they're looking at changing that rule. Um, I know they changed the settlement with equities. It used to be five, three days, and now it's two days. But they're looking at changing that, but they haven't yet. So if you're under twenty five grand and you want to get into this, and and for whatever reason it hits this, and just takes off today, and you want to close it out. That's one day trade. So just be aware of that. We got like three minutes left. If anybody has any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Like I said, there's a lot to cover, and this is just a, a overview sort of a deal. Just a quick uh, give you an idea of what's possible with credit spreads. Oh, there's another one coming in. And, oh, American is this American Express? No, Enterprise, Ameriprise. Okay. okay. So that's another one you could take. Uh, again, if you want to be conservative, you could do the 135. I would come up here myself and sell the 140. I'm a little more aggressive than some people are. Okay. Sell the 135 underneath it. That Ameri there's American Express, okay. You'll notice I don't clear off my charts until I actually use them the next time. So I was looking at this a, a while ago, I suppose. And I never clean them up, okay. But look at look at how tight pricing is here. It might not be the best zone. You might want to wait for a confirmation trade, you know, take it after it starts to leave the zone. But it, it starts, okay. This is, a, what is this, a five? Oh, that's, that's for my gaps. <laughs> I don't look at I look at a 15 minute to refine uh where I'm going in and where I'm getting out. Okay. So anyway, um that's about it for us. I don't think I got anything left. No, chart's all done. I will uh go back and look at the uh suggestion from Jeff on how to put this up on uh full screen and use my arrow keys next time. Um I, I tell you what, let's go this. I'll show you, uh, well, no, we don't have enough time. I'll do it next time.
But anyways, there's the whole set. Okay, I hope you found it useful. And we will see you, I think tomorrow I'm doing uh, an intraday stock option, or not option, uh, an intraday stock. So we're looking at stocks that we might be able to get into in the middle of the day. Um, and that's tomorrow. And then uh, Saturday, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time, I'm doing the first part of a trade plan class, how to create a trade plan. So if you're interested in that, stop on by. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Chuck. Thank you very much. And again, uh, as we said at the beginning of the of the presentation, uh, this is uh, the, the first week we're, we're running the FX Trade Educational Sessions uh, here. And therefore, uh, we are combining a little bit of uh, theory with the practice. And therefore, especially if you're new to options, uh, this may feel a bit intense. Uh, it's okay. Just bear with us. We're going to add more structure. And we're going to get uh, more organized when it comes to explaining what we're doing and then demonstrating what we're doing. And we learn through repetition everything in life, isn't it? So, Sam, will happen here. Thank you so much. Uh, super pleasure. Uh, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you again, Chuck. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye.